Hallelujah. And what a life to win in Christ. No greater life than the life of God. And that life is in Christ and it's called eternal life. Man has mortal life. But God has eternal life. And God wants us as his children to be of his kind. That was the intention from the beginning. That he made man to be in his image and in his likeness. But man has fallen short of that because of sin. But Christ is the image. Oh my God. The express image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. And we are called to be conformed to his image. We are called to be what? Conformed to his image. Because the image that man lost through sin, God wants to restore through Christ. Let me say that again. The image that man lost through sin, God wants to restore through Christ. Christ is the one who will bring us back to that image. Praise God. In Romans 8, hallelujah, verse 28 to 29, says we know that all things, we know that what? All things work together for good to those who love God. Hello, it's not for everybody. It's not for those who God love, but it's for those who love him. It is important to make that note. All things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. To be conformed. To be what? Conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Come on. The firstborn among many what? Oh my God. And if he's firstborn, then there are others coming. He's not going to be the only born. Hallelujah. But he's there to bring many sons to glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he says, who he predestined, he called. Whom he called, these he also what? He justified. He made them right. He aligned them with the will and purpose of God through the word and the Holy Spirit. Whom he justified, these he also glorified glorified come on so he says what shall we say to these things if god is for us who can be against us who did not he who did not spare his own son imagine that he did not spare his only son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him? How shall he what? Not with him. He's not excluded. We cannot have that life without him. So he says, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Come on, somebody. It, when God justifies you, you're well justified. He says, he, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? And what is he doing there? Also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, 
persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword. Come on. Huh? Come on now. As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. They don't value our life. But yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Come on. And Paul says, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities no powers, no things present or things to come, no height, no depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is where? Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can't have it being outside of the Lord. You got to be in him. Note the note that we things we are highlighting in the verse for you to know your position to gain such favor. Many want the favor, but they don't want the position. <laughs> huh? And some would say, yes, I want the position, but they don't want to do the work. They don't want to do what is required. To obtain, to stand in such a position with Christ. And the Lord knows that anyone who chooses to follow him must first deny themselves. Come on. He must humble himself. Self has got to get out of the way. It can't be about their way. What they think, what they feel and what they want to do. They got to submit to his way. And there's only one way. And he is the way. The truth and the life. And he says then, any how we come into the Father, it must be through him. Come on now. So he's the one bringing many sons to glory. He's the one what? Bringing many sons to glory. In Hebrews 2 verse 10. He says, for it is fitting for him, for whom are all things. He says, all things are really for him. And by whom are all things. He says, all things have come into being through him. In bringing many sons. There it is. To glory. Hallelujah. Many want to stay on the verse that all have sinned. And fell short of the glory of God. Not recognizing that Christ came. To remove the very thing that caused us. To fall short of the glory. And that is sin. He came to take our sins away. And in him. There is no sin. And he knows if we abide in him. Oh my God. We will not sin. Come on. That's what he's calling us to abide in him and let his word abide in us. He said that to his disciples over and over for them to understand the importance of sticking to his command, to his word, and to his Holy Spirit. Come on. He said to them in John 15 verse 1 to 8. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, my father, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Huh? And Jesus said, you are already clean. Why? Because of the word which I have spoken to you. So the word has cleansing power. Come on. 
the word has what cleansing power to make you pure clean in an unclean and filthy world he says abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot be a fruit of itself unless what unless it abides in me neither can you unless you abide in me come on and he says i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him what is the result of that it bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing hello somebody huh come on and when he says nothing there is speaking in regarding to bearing fruit says you cannot bear fruit without him if anyone he says does not abide in me what happens to that one he is what he is cast out as a branch and is withered he withers away huh and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt come on I mean they'll be destroyed they have no use in the kingdom of god he says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father's what glorified come on that you bear what that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples how are you his disciples by bearing fruit some have misunderstood the text the thing that it is saying by your praying and getting answered prayer so they think that yes it's for me to ask what i desire and the lord do it and god now operates like my santa claus sending my wish list and get my wish filled and then i said yes there is glory to god nobody's talking about the fruit of the spirit you see when the fruit of the spirit is there then he says you'll have greater results in your prayer life but your prayer life must not be a means for just obtaining things it must be a means to get closer to the one you are praying to to know his heart and that he in turn can reveal his heart through you to someone else as jesus did in coming and revealing the father to us come on somebody so he's making sons to come back to the image and that's what i started with and that's where i am now to let you understand god wants you to return to that image to that likeness that is in him he made you to have that image and likeness of him but sin has warped twisted huh sin has corrupted and perverted that image but god is saying christ the word who became flesh came to remove every sin that you through him can be restored in the glory now today they say no glory for us all the glory for god what jesus said father as you have the glory you have given me what he said the glory you have given me i have given to them see god is not scared for us to partake of the glory his son has the glory and we as the children that follow the son must also share in the glory 
God is not scared for us to have it. Come on. His intention and purpose from the beginning that we should be filled with his glory. Come on. He says, Jesus prayed in John 17. St. John 17 verse 20 to 23. Jesus said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Does God have the glory? And if we are in him, will we not have the glory? Of course we will. He says that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me. There it is. And the glory which you, Father, gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we how on come on the glory that you gave me have given it to them he's not a price he's not working for us not to have it he wants us to have it as the children of god he says i in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that you have what you have sent me and I've loved them as you have loved me. Come on. It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. That glory is Christ. And when he resides in us. Hallelujah. My God. And we reside in him. We are full of his glory. Come on. And he wants us to be full of the glory of God. Come on somebody. In Colossians 1. That's it. Verse 24 to 27. says Paul says. I now rejoice. In my suffering for you. Fill up in my flesh. Whatever is lacking. In the afflictions of Christ. For the sake of his body. What is that body? Which is the church. Of which I became a minister. According to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to do what to fulfill the word of God the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to who has been revealed to the saints glory to God to them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which are us? He says, which is Christ in you? Who is that? Where is that glory? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Come on. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working which works in me mightily. Glory to God. And he says, man, if the Christ is abiding in you and you are abiding in Christ, he says, you are going to be a fruit. The glory, the fullness of God will be revealed in you. Come on. And Paul spoke that he wants the saints to be filled with the fullness of God. To be what? Filled with the fullness of God. And that's what we are aiming to. With the word and the Holy Spirit, God's intention is that we be filled with his fullness. As the sun is filled with the fullness, so must we as the children of God. We are the brethren that follow him that is the firstborn. But the glory in him will be in us. Come on now. 
Hello. Glory to God. And so we got to bear that glory. You're hearing it? Praise God. That's Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3 verse 14 to 17 says, For this reason, Paul says, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in where? In the inner man, that's in your spirit, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love, come on, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, what is the length, what is the depth, what is the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be what? There it is in verse 19. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power. According to what? The power that works in us. It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. To him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus to all generations. Forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. And he says he wants you to be restored in the glory. You were never meant to be operating in the earth without the glory of God. Sin cut short that glory. But Christ came to restore the glory. Hallelujah. And it's Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are what? Are passed away and behold, all things become new. God is raising up a new generation. God is raising up his people in the highways and the byways, in the king house and in the poor house, on the mountains and in the valleys. God is raising up his people in some places that people would not expect. God is raising up a new kind. Hallelujah. Many are satisfied just to continue as mankind. But God is raising up some God kind. His children of men are, will see and behold the children of God. Come on. Coming in all the glory. Coming in all the fullness. And Paul said it in Romans 8. That all creation is waiting. All creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, not for the manifestation of the sons of men. They've already seen that. Come on. They already see what we look like in the flesh. But my God, what a day it will be when we look like him in the spirit and unveil in the full glory as he is. And Paul spoke about that. Glory to God. In Romans 8, also John spoke about it. We start with Romans 8, verse 18. And he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present age, this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory. With the what? With the glory that shall be revealed in us. It's in us, brethren. Come on. And he says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits. Eagerly waits for what? The revealing, the unveiling, the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the son of God, but the sons of God. 
Look at it. He says, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected in hope. What was the hope? That the glory be restored. Come on. The glory be restored in us. His children. Come on now. He says because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Into what? Into the glorious liberty of who? Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. All creation is waiting on that moment when this mortal will put on immortality. All creation is waiting for this body to be changed from this physical body to a spiritual body. All creation is waiting for death and decay to pass away and it be swallowed up by life eternal in Christ. And he says, this is what it is subjected to await. My God, when we change, the whole world will change. Come on, somebody. He says, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood. Come on now. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. This I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, this body, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Now does corruption, that's how Paul is describing the body there, as corruption because it's aging, getting old and it will soon die and go back to the dust. Ah, he says, now does corruption inherit incorruption. The kingdom of God is incorruptible. It, it is an eternal kingdom. We cannot hope up, inherit the kingdom of God in temporary form. He must inherit it in an eternal form. And that's why he says there, in a moment, he says, we shall be changed. Come on now. I told you a mystery. We shall not all sleep means that we shall not all die. But we who are alive and remain, he says, shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. My God, by the time you blink. Huh? At the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. And who rise first? The dead will raise incorruptible. And we, being alive, he says, shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on what? A body that is last forever. This body doesn't last forever. He says this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal, speaking of the flesh, must put on immortality. That is speaking of the spirit. Ha ha. He says so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, then what? And this mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory come on and he says oh death where is your sting ha ha oh hey this where is your victory what is the sting of death sin but Christ came to remove sin from us Death has no sting for the true believer and saint in Christ. Come on. He says, death, where is your sting? And for he says, the strength of the sin, of sin is the law. Come on now. But we who are in Christ are not under the law. We are under grace. Grace doesn't license us to sin and say we are forgiven. Grace empowers us over sin. That sin will not have dominion over us. Come on. So we have that life within this earthen vessel. But he says this earthen vessel must be changed. It cannot remain. Flesh and blood cannot. 
inherit the kingdom of God and dwell, spoke about it for them to understand that this body must be changed. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 4 verse 6 to 7 says, For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of what? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure here in earth and vessels, speaking of the flesh. We have this treasure, but it's in earth and vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And if we abide in him, we do not sin. Come on. That's what John declared in 1 John 3. Hallelujah. Verse 3 to 6. He said it there that they would understand why we walk in such purity. Huh? Anyone who has this hope, he says, everyone who has this hope in him. 1 John 3 verse 3. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself how? Just as he is pure. Come on somebody. That's the work of the word and the Holy Spirit. The power that works in us presents that life. And he says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to do what? To take away our sins. It's not to cover them up or condone them till the body change. Uh -uh. To take them away. They must not be a part of our lives. Come on. And in him, there it is. In him, there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Scripture. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Scripture. Come on now. And those who fall in sin and say we know him, they are lying. And the Lord will reveal it so that those who say such things, they are lying and not practicing the truth. John said that in 1 John 1, hallelujah, verse 5 to 7, he says, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is there in him oh yes in him is no darkness at all if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness are we telling the truth no he says we lie and do not practice the truth if we say we have fellowship with God while in sin it's a lie. Come on. But he said, but if we walk in the light, as he, come on now, is in the light, what's the result? We have fellowship one with another. Where is that fellowship? In the light, where there's no darkness at all. And the blood of Jesus gives us that testimony. Huh? His son cleanses us from from some, from most, from all sin. And if he cleanses us from all, is there any left? Come on, somebody. Somebody need to receive the truth and understand what the Lord is saying. When you got this life in you, you are not that old person you used to be. It's not some self-improvement work. You're trying to be better. When Christ lives in you, you are a new creation. Hallelujah. And the nature of Christ overpowers your sinful nature of your flesh. All you have to do is submit to him that he will dwell in you. And you will dwell in him as he told you. Without him you can do 
nothing. You cannot bear fruit without him. He's the one who produces that fruit, that life in you. Come on. John said it also. Hallelujah. In, in 1 John 5, hallelujah, verse 9 to 13. He said there that that's the testimony we receive from God. He said, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. God has testified of his son. He says, he who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. Come on now. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony. That's what he has not believed. It's not that he don't believe there's a God. He don't believe the testimony God gave. He has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Come on. And what's that testimony? Verse 11. He says, and this is the testimony that God has given us. Eternal life. And where is this life? He says, and this life is in his son. We already read that being in the son. You do not sin being in the son. That's the life. We are showing you. He says, this is the life. This life is in his son. God testify about that. And said, he who has the son has that life. Which he's speaking about eternal life, not mortal life eternal life and he says he who does not have the son of God does not have life speaking about eternal life he may have mortal life but he does not have eternal life hello and he says these things I have written to you who what who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know, you need to know that you have eternal life. And what? And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. If you have his name means salvation of the Lord. And what did he come to save us from? He came to save us from our sin. And if you believe he saved you from it, how can you still be tangling in it? You can't be saved from something you're still playing in. That still got you bound. Still making you do things you shouldn't be doing. That means you're under its dominion. But when you're under grace, you're under Christ's leadership and authority in your life. It doesn't accommodate sin. He declares and profess the righteousness of God. That's what you're called to manifest through the life that is in you. Come on. Hallelujah. And many say they have this life, but we are not seeing it. They don't really love their brothers who are in Christ. When they hear of any brother or sister in Christ, say, no, I've stopped sinning. They said, no, you're a liar. You're still doing it. All of us doing it. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. May the Lord have mercy on you. What did Jesus Christ come to do? Just to pardon your sin that you can continue to sin? Paul addressed that and told him it's not so. And John here says it is not so too. Come on. He said in 1 John 3, verse 14 to 16, we know we have passed. We know that we have passed from death to life. Why? Because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. He's not in the Lord. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. That person is not saved. 
You know that no murderer, he says, has eternal life abiding in him. That sounds like somebody safe. No. And remember, he says, He who have the Son have that life. That one doesn't have the life of God in him. He has mortal life, the life of man. But he doesn't have the life of God. He says, By this we know love, because he what? He laid down his life for us. What are we to do? We also are to lay down our lives for the brethren. What does that mean? About just dying? No, he's talking about becoming dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. Come on. That's what he's talking about. So when the more you sin, the more you hurt the brethren. The more you destroy the faith of many who believe that in Christ they can be free from sin. Your actions are saying it's not practical. And some will even go further to say it to others. Well, the Lord know we're going to do it as long as we're in this flesh. That's why he sent Jesus. We have an advocate. What a liar. Come on. Even the very verse that speaks about having an advocate. John spoke in that very same verse and said this. These things I write to you, my little children, so that you may not sin. Now they say, no, you can't. We can't tell you that you're not going to sin. We can tell you to ask the Lord to forgive you. Can you have an advocate? So they are quoting only piece of what John said. That's First John 2 verse 1. They love the advocate part because they don't plan to stop. But, but John didn't tell us I have an advocate that they can sin and get away. He's saying I write these things to you so that you may not sin. They skip over that and say, well, well, John, you know we're going to do it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Anyone who abides in Christ does not sin. The life that remains in him is against sin. It's the life of God in Christ. Tempted in all ways, yet without sin. And he knows how to help those who are being tempted. Come on. He knows what? How to help those who are being tempted. He's not helping you when you, just when you sin. He helped you when you're being tempted to stand. And having done all to stand against all the wiles of the devil. He's able to help you. Come on now. Huh? He said in Hebrews 2, verse 16 to 18, For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to who? To the seed of Abraham. Notice not the seeds of Abraham, but the seed of Abraham. Speaking of Christ. And he says, therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren that he might be what? A merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to who? To men? To God? To make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself suffered. What did he suffer? Being tempted and being that he suffered being tempted, what is he able to do? To aid those who are tempted. Not fight to aid those who sin. When you have it twisted, then you'd see it as a means that he's my getaway card. You keep on doing it and say, I can't get away. But Paul already said it in Romans 6. 
verse 1 to 6 that that's not the means of grace grace is not a means to continue in sin but grace is the power to put an end to that sinful life to the residing presence of God through Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit abiding in you that's where it comes so he says what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound did Paul say yes no Paul said certainly not why he says how shall we who died to sin he says that's what grace do for you it caused you to die to sin now it seems like many don't die to it yet so it's sure that they're not under grace they're still under the law that's why the sin has so much command and dominion over them while they're under the law but he says he who is under the grace of christ lives a different life because the law doesn't make anyone perfect but christ does come on now he says do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into christ jesus were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him to baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by what by the glory of the father the same glory he said he has given to us through the word and his spirit he says even so we also should walk in newness of life come on somebody that's the truth he says for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection what should we know there knowing this that our old man as the old way with his whole sinful nature was crucified with him that dead that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer not sometimes no longer be slaves of sin come on somebody those who know the truth the glory of God is increasing in them they are going from glory to glory come on in the face of Jesus Christ because they are under his grace they are not under the law he came the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ and Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free free from what free from sin hallelujah and he said for anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin and you know no slave remain in the house forever none of them will remain in the kingdom of god but he says but a son anyone who is a son he says remains forever that's why he says whom the son sets free is free indeed it's not free just in mind but the action still there for sin no he says free indeed in every way and every sense of the word free come on and he sent you free from sin you should not be entangled again in that yoke of bondage because God has called you to new life in Christ Jesus and that life is called eternal life it's unbroken fellowship with the father sin breaks that fellowship because there's no sin in him but if we abide in him we have fellowship with the father and those who abide in him have fellowship one with another 
And the testimony is that his blood cleanses us from all sin. See how it all comes together? Because if you are in him and abide in him, the life in him must manifest in you. You can't just have it as a thought or an idea of having received him. But you must truly receive him. Because only truly him can set you free. All other freedom only have an appearance of freedom. But still bring people into bondage. And that's what Paul spoke about. Some who profess freedom, but they still bring people into bondage. Many believers are out there preaching, teaching, leading, running Sunday school, Sabbath school, and still sitting. Trying to teach others not to sin while they themselves still doing it. That's not what the Lord called us to do. You must get your house in order. Straighten out your life with the Lord. Be truly saved from sin before you go trying to get people saved from sin. It's true. Peter said it. Huh? Peter said it in 2 Peter 2. For when they, 2 verse 18, yes. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh. To lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty. Look at that verse 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. They are hypocrites. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also is brought into bondage. Christ didn't come to put you in bondage. He come to set you free. Sin doesn't set you free. Sin puts you in bondage. Come on. He says, for if they, after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and the saving Savior Jesus Christ, they again be entangling them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. See? Knowing Christ doesn't permit you to sin and say, I know him. He says, after knowing him, you have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what the knowledge of Christ brings. It separates you from sin. Now they say you have knowledge but still in sin. What a lie. He says those who say such things come with empty words that bring people into bondage. They promise them freedom. But they lead them into corruption. He said it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to having known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered to them. My God. And they still doing that today. And saying thank God for grace and mercy. You're going to see where that lead them. Because God is not partial in judgment. And God will judge everyone according to their deeds. Come on. And they want to, God to wink at their deeds and say, Oh, that's okay, I got you. Grace cover that. <laughs> that's not the means to grace. He says, how can we continue in sin if we died to it? Those who died to sin don't continue in sin. They now live lives of righteousness in Christ Jesus. He wants you to know the truth. And I'm here to tell you whether you want to hear it or not. He wants you to know it. 
And I'm living by the truth. I'm not sinning. They have many who have come and tried to accuse and say I'm a man of evil. But thank God, God has proven it falsely. Because that's not my life. That's not my way. That's not my conduct. It is, my life is it in Christ. And in Christ alone I stand. And that life doesn't include sin. <laughs> you can have the same testimony. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to sin at all you can stop there can be an end of sin in your life just like a person leaves an employment and never goes back there to work but goes to work for the opposing ones goes to work for the competition and said they'll never return there come on just the same way the Lord said to Paul just the same way you presented your bodies as instruments of sin leading to more sin. Instruments of unrighteousness leading to all kind of unrighteousness and evil. He says, even so present your members instruments of righteousness to God. That's in Romans 6 verse 13. Hallelujah to 14. He says, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Sin don't just happen. You got to present yourself to sin. To do its work. He says, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead because of the life you have in you as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to who? to God you can't serve God and sin that's not how a child of God lives Come on. He says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Huh? He says, what then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? He says, certainly not. So if he said certainly not, how do you still sin? Come on. And say you're under grace. You know what he's saying. Stand by the word. And the word will stand by you. Stand by what God says. And you will have what the word says. But if you keep on grumbling and complain and murmur and find excuse. You will always fail. And fail miserably. Come on. Paul says in verse 16 of Romans 6, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were past tense you were slaves of sin what happened now yet you obeyed present tense from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered delivered from what delivered from sin and having been set free from sin who you become slaves of Slaves of righteousness. Righteousness is not sin. Sin is not righteousness. They don't work together. That's why Paul says, you must not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because unbelievers will tell you, no, you can't do it. 
But God is telling you, yes, you can. Come on. And he says, what fellowship is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Lawlessness is sin. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. He says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? See, because many of them gain friendship with the world, that's why they don't believe this message anymore. They will tell you, no, none of us is perfect. We can't do that. Come on. Because the world has convinced them that. And they're talking like the world. But Paul is saying, what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Bilal? What part as a believer with an unbeliever? But because many of them have formed covenant with them, they can't believe the word again because of the friendship and ties they have to the world and to the things of the world. He says, what agreement as the temple of God with idols? He says, for you are the temple of the living God. And what did God said? I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So what did he command them to do? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. What is that? Sin. And I will receive you. And I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says who? Says the Lord Almighty. Come on. Many don't believe in this sinless life anymore. They believe more in sinful life and beg God pardon and mercy and hope they make it. Unbelievers, they don't believe in the testimony of Christ. If they believe in Christ, then Christ said the works that I do you will do it too. And greater works you will do. But they don't believe. They only testify about Christ without having the testimony of him in their life. Because they are still in sin. That's not the life God called us to have. There is no sin in him. Glory to God. God sent him to restore the glory. And the glory is not restored with us in sin. It's restored with us in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Come on. It's nothing new about sin. That's all about the whole life. And he says you must have no part or lot with it. Because now you must abide in Christ. And receive of the gift of God in Christ. Eternal life. It's yours for the taking and the keeping. If you abide in him. And his word abide in you. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I hope this word soak in your spirit today and bring you out into a new fellowship and communion with the Lord that is in spirit and in truth. God is looking for such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Many speak and worship God with their lips but it's not in spirit and in truth. There is no true worship without truth. And there is no truth in lies. Truth is in the word. 
And there's no sin in the word. That's why he wants you to abide in the word. And let the word abide in you. Do you believe? If you believe, you can receive that life right now. You don't need to work for it. It's a gift. But when you receive the gift, you must put the gift to work. It must show, bear fruit that is truly in you. Otherwise, you'll be disqualified from the benefits God has for you in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the grace you have given us in Christ. It's in Christ alone. All the weaknesses and flaws, and my God, ways of our carnal nature that wants to corrupt and pervert and lead us further and further away from your will and your purpose for us in Christ. Your very nature of Christ within us overpowers that sinful nature and gives us new life. And that's why you said, who the Son set free is free indeed. There are persons who want to know that freedom. Who want to know what it is to be truly free from sin. And not have to think that it's only when they leave this body they can be free. But to know that they can live that life in this body in Christ right now. It's available to them now in Christ Jesus. He said, whosoever will let him come. For you will abundantly pardon and you will de deliver them and save them from all their sin. All of them. And grace is being released for newness of life. That the law of the spirit of life in Christ will set them free from the law of sin and death. For who you set free is free indeed. Let grace be released now to those that humble themselves and receive the word. For you give the word and grace to those who humble themselves. Those who are proud, you resist and they will perish in their sin. We pray grace over the hearers that they will hear and understand and apply your words to their heart. And see it bear fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remain to the glory of your precious name. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise. Glory to God. And it's an awesome thing to be free from sin and have Christ within. To be made a joint ear with Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful wonderful thing i'm praying that you come to know this joy and peace this purity holiness and righteousness in christ it's not the righteousness of men it is the righteousness of god but it's in christ we only can have that life in him that's why it says you must abide in him i'm praying that you will stand the lord said to peter the devil is seeking to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. Prayed for your faith. That your faith will remain. And when you are restored, go and restore the others. Come on. He faltered along the way. But he was not yet, the spirit was not yet in him. As the Lord said to them, the spirit was with them. But the Lord said there come a time after his death that the spirit would be in them. And the testimony bear evidence that it was so by the life that he lived when the spirit was in him. And that's what Paul said in Romans 8 verse 9. You are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. For he said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You want the spirit of Christ to abide in you, that you will know him 
in a very personal and real way. That is the aim. That is the goal. That is, must be your main objective. To know him. And you said you cannot know him in sin. Because sin forms a wedge between you and him. But when sin is taken out of the way, what sweet fellowship we have with him. He is holy. And for him to fellowship with us, we must be holy. Come on. Glory to God. I'm praying for you that you will stand and that when you are restored, you will go and restore the others who have heard otherwise and think that someone is not doable. We must sin every now and then. And those who think that way is jeopardizing their soul and their position of faith in the Lord. And we, would, we cannot allow that to happen anymore. Come on, go tell them the truth and encourage them to stand. As Paul says, putting on the whole arm of God, which is being clothed in the fullness of Christ. He said you should stand against all the wiles of the devil. And having done all, stand. Come on. That is a short word from God. And if you receive that word, it's going to be a fruit in your life. As long as you hold to it and I keep on applying it, it will even be a greater fruit and fruit that will remain. Amen. Praise God. So hope you're blessed by the word today. If you want to hear more from us, hallelujah, you can check out our website. Hallelujah is increasingfaith.org. That's our church's website. It's increasingfaith intl.org we are aiming to bring the word to you and those who have been blessed by the word can of course log on to the website and see with the teachings and background about us to see we've been doing this for years if you want to get more teaching in the word of the kingdom we have a book release year before last year on Amazon just go on Amazon.com and put in the search box Richard V. Fagan and you see the book come up. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel of Christ. The Gospel that Jesus preached. Hallelujah. You want you to know it because it's going to accelerate your walk and fellowship with the Lord. And that is our aim. We trust that as you hear, the Spirit of God will be a witness with your spirit that we are declaring to you the truth and nothing but the truth. And know that it's there for you all along. But someone needed to guide and show you that you can walk in it through faith and obedience to God in his word. Come on. So we encourage you. Hold to the word. Hold on to eternal life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you will see great and mighty results. Praise God. If you want to get more of the teachings, you can send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook be plugged into our five live stream teachings each week on Facebook. We also edit it and put more scripture to it on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to Apostle Richard Fagan. You'll see we added more scripture there that you can raise your faith to new levels in sharing with other persons using scriptural foundational teachings to show them the basis of your faith is embedded in the word. Hallelujah. And we wanted to know it's not something the word doesn't condone our old lifestyle and say we may all get to heaven. The word is here to change us. Hallelujah. To be walk and to live as true children of God. Hallelujah. And we wanted to know that. And we believe that those who know can testify it is so. Amen. Praise God. So we are praying for you. Hope to hear from you soon. Praise God. Those who want to get more word that they like daily bread from daily word in their homes or teaching in their family or their school or workplace. We have something called our daily devotional that we have been doing from last year, January, 1st of January. So we have about 15 months going of day-to-day -day teachings that we have put it in monthly editions and put it together as an e-book that can be downloaded as a file to your laptop, phone, or hallelujah, tablet, 
device that you can read at your convenience. It's yours, free. We're not charging for that. That's our love gift to you. And we believe it will be a great tool for you to use to educate others and edify the body of Christ in the knowledge of the Son of God and the life we have in him. I believe God is still bringing us into a deeper understanding of the gospel because the further mysteries of the gospel to be unveiled and God is still unveiling it out of the scriptures as we commit to him and hearken to his voice and his leading in our lives. It will still unfold more. As he said, we are moving from glory to glory in the face of Jesus Christ. And so we want you to know it's there for you. Come on. And if he says glory to glory, there's greater glory. If he says grace to grace, there's greater level of grace. If he says faith to faith, there's greater level of faith. God wants you to grow in all these things. For Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, I spoke as a child. But he said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Must be a point where those things are no longer a part of your life because of the knowledge you have in Christ. Hallelujah. So we want you to know it. Praise God. So any further questions, you can call us at a number on the screen whether you're requesting the daily devotional or to contact with us. It's 876-8390-9390-876-557-2427-876-525-6757. Looking forward to Billy Most Holy Faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all in Jesus' name.